everyone. Uh, do I know how many people are first time to follow Science Singapore tonight? Nobody good. Uh, anyone who had been to Taiwan for Bong Shan? Hey. Oh, only one third. So few of you. So the rest of you had not been to Bong Shan before. Uh, actually, today's topic is on this book. Uh, anyone, anyone had not read this book yet? Most of you. Okay. And today, uh, uh, the topic, uh, the chapter that I'm going to share is actually the overview. Overview actually is the very simplest chapter because it's an introduction to Opongshan to all of you. Why do I put this title, Humanistic Buddhism in a Modern Era? Because uh, Opongshan, as you know, we do a lot of activities, uh, we do a lot of uh, functions, which is which are, you cannot see in the traditional temples. But uh, how do you define traditional? How do you define traditional? Meditation? Praying? Chanting? Oh. Are you sure these are traditional? Buddhism started where? India, then moved to where? China, Sri Lanka, then I was Southeast Asia, and then Japan, Korea, and then Europe, US, all over the world. But you see, our, the so-called traditional that we mentioned, when you look at Buddhism in Japan, Korea, what are their traditions? Look at their Buddhism today. You know, they are, they are, the monk can get married. Yeah, they are, their job is as a monk. They go to temple from 8 to 5. People in Japan, they look for temple only when there are people die in their family. This is very sad, you know, to us. The same thing in Korea. You know that the, 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 the monks there, I mean, what they eat, we don't care. But you look, look at them and us and the Buddhism today in India, in Sri Lanka, in Thailand, and also in China. So what is traditional? This is what I want to emphasize today. Traditional against our modern era. So what we are doing today in Phu Bang Shan. Uh, actually, I'm, 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 I'm a bit nervous today because there are too many people. <laughs> For your info, I haven't spoken English properly for the past 12 years. Uh, I went to Taiwan in 2005 and uh, this is my first time having English drama talk uh, since I left Singapore 12 years ago. Uh, and you know, in Taiwan we always speak in Mandarin. So uh, I really had difficulty three days ago when I first, first spoken in KL. But I think I got a mark today. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I think most of you haven't read this before. So uh, if you can read, we read together this one. Okay. In the 2006 years of Buddhism's dissemination, many transitions arose as adaptations to the diverse needs of distinctive countries. Whom they all follow is the Buddha, propagating the teaching of Buddha. All are Buddhism, specifically all are humanistic Buddhism. Humanistic Buddhism is what the Buddha conveyed to the human world, with the original intent to teach, instruct, benefit, and bring joy, and to attain the Buddha's insight. It is closely related to society and individuals, evident in the Buddha's declaration of equality. All sentient beings possess the Buddha's nature, fitting the modern mentality of freedom, democracy, and equality. May I know why you walk into the temple? Why do you walk? Why, why do you come to the temple? Why do you? 
learn Buddhism. Learn to be Buddha. What else? Uh, find peace. What attracted you to come into a temple? When you first, let's say you look at the Forum Shan building outside, what actually attracted you to come in? The building structure? Or Baron Master Singh? Or your friend brought you in? Yeah. I got to know Buddhism when I was in the uni in Australia. Okay. Then at that time, because my friend she wanted to look for a place to eat vegetarian. Because you can't get vegetarian food in Australia. So we drove for two hours plus from our uni place to Wumba. Uh, I studied in University of South Queensland. Uh, why I chose that uni because the place, uh, the rental place, the, the living, living standard is lower than Brisbane. So we drove for two hours plus to go to uh, Sunnybank where our Jongkeng temple was. Then that's how I walked into a temple. But after that, the current abbess, Venerable Jue Shan, uh, she actually uh, asked me to participate in an event, in a Dharma function, or the Pahuan Zai Jie. Or you have to take, a, take, take eight precepts in one day. Then at that time, I was still having colored hair and earrings, you know. Uh, then of course, a few of my friends. Uh, then what happened? Of course, of course, during daytime we follow everything, and at night before we went back to our hostel, because Chongqing Temple at that time they didn't have enough space for us to stay. Just like if you have a one-day event here, uh, you can't stay overnight here, and we have a separate uh, house away from Chongqing Temple. Then you know what, Venerable Jason gave us a box of instant noodles. Oh, can you eat that in that kind of event? No, right? Or oh, you won't eat after dinner. Or even you eat liquid food only. Oh, and then, what happened when we went to the house? Wow, there's a television. Oh, what happened? You know, at that time, it was the Australian Open. Oh, I like tennis very much. So I asked her, can we watch TV? Ah? She said, yes, you can watch. Wow, amazing. But of course at that time I didn't know I, I didn't know this kind of event supposed to be strict. Only when I look back, she gave me such convenience. I mean not me, us. You see, eating instant noodles at night you can cook at your own. Huh? No matter how, how many packets you want to eat, it's up to you. And then I can even lie down on the sofa and watch Australian Open. That's, that's my beginning, and I didn't have a bad impression of Buddhism. Oh, I went to the church at that time, you know. Uh, I, 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 I was involved in church activities, but I didn't baptize it. Why I mention this place? Because I think almost 100 of us here, uh, including, including myself, we walk into a temple, uh, we walk into a temple, with different reasons. Uh, that is how, why it is being stated by our founder, <coughs> Venerable Master Shigui, uh, that uh, what is Buddhism today? Uh, with uh, conveyed to the human world uh, with the original intent. Then, what our founder said here, this is quoted from another book, The Blueprints of Life. The rationale for humanistic Buddhism derives directly from the Buddha because the Buddha was born, cultivated the path, became enlightened, and strived to enlighten others in this world. Now, in this world, it is with this understanding that Venerable Master Shingri proceeds to elaborate on many ways in which the Buddha's teachings can guide us to challenges in life. In doing so, he affirm, affirms the basic spirits of humanistic Buddhism that centers on the conviction that the Dharma is of crucial pertinence to humanity. Okay? So you see, if you want to come in here to find peace, to find happiness, do you pray to Buddha and ask Buddha to give you? Or you find yourself? 
it's fine yourself. Huh? Okay. Then I'm going to move on to a bit of the history of Fokong Shang. Well, I think most of you here are new. Uh, why do I show you the picture of our Buddhist college? Because our founder, he started Fokong Shang with Buddhist college. Why he started off with a uh, with a Buddhist college instead of a temple. When you propagate Dharma, who do you need? Who do you need? Monastics? Of course, for, for most of us, we will think of a monastic where we, where we see a temple. But frankly speaking, it is why uh, he had this Buddhist college at that time, because we need Buddhist talents. Buddhist talents. And he, accept, he accepted people like you all. Uh, I was like you all more than 10 years ago. Uh, and 50 years ago, there were many, many of us uh, currently the variables that you see in Fokong Shan. Uh, they were lay people. Because Master always, always believed that uh, you need to change someone. Uh, with, I mean, if you want to change someone, you have to go through education. So that is why he started off with this, this Buddhist college. And you can see the picture down here. It was a mountain. But today, uh, when you look at this one, okay, this picture, this is the current view of Fokong Shan. Uh, why is it being improved into this? Because at that time when the Buddhist college started, we didn't have any buildings beside that place. But as more and more people know that there is a Buddhist college, what people do, they donate money. Uh, they want to come and visit. They want to come and support. So as more and more people coming in, say for example, you are sitting in this class, and there's a window next to the class, and maybe your mom, maybe your relatives, maybe your friends, or maybe other visitors starting looking into, into the window to look at you having classes. That is an interruption, a disturbance. So Master actually started building other buildings in Fokong Shan. The next building built was... Sorry. This place, oh, the Compassion Shrine, okay, next building. And then when people started coming in, maybe from Taipei, from other places, what do they need? They need to eat, they need to stay. So that is why we have other buildings that allow people to stay and eat when they come in, okay? Then this is the beginning of Fokong Shan. Then in 1988, our first overseas temple in the United States was established. It actually went through over 10 years before it was done, but it was completed. It started planning in 1978, but it did, it, it wasn't, got, wasn't so successful because in US, when you need, a, you need to build something out, uh, out of extraordinary, and there wasn't a Chinese temple in that place before. And if you want to build something here, you have to go through the agreement from the neighbors. So we went through six court hearings and more than 100 times of negotiation. Then it was started building in 1986 uh, and then completed in 1990. 1988, and then that's how we got the the one of the seven wonders of Buddhist world, and also the eight religious wonders to see in the US. This this was the first overseas branch temples in our Fokong Shan. Do you know how many years Fokong Shan had been in Singapore? Twenty one. Oh. 31. If you look at look at a uh, temple, 
Okay. It was uh, first started in 1996, but BLIA, um, BLIA Singapore started when 1993 or 1993. But our BLIA headquarters started in 1992 in LA. Also, this is a little bit of our history in Singapore. Then in 1996, after that, we, we started from where? East Coast. Then moved to where? Paya Lebar. And then here. Then, do you know when was this place uh, started building? 2005. Uh, then completed when? 2007. Uh, and then we had big ceremonies in 2008, right? And until today, almost 10 years. Uh, Nine, ten years. So you look at the temples in overseas. It doesn't happen in one day, you know. It doesn't happen in one day. I remember when we were in Paya Leba, I think the size was about twice of this room only. Uh, twice of this room. But I think it was a very good memory when I was there uh, because uh, a lot of people were together and I'm happy that to see how uh, today there are more and more people coming in to this place uh, to get something, uh, to get something to enlighten yourself. Okay? And then, like I said, uh, we had monastic and just now the BLIA. Uh, these two, I think these two, these two important key factors, we work hand in hand uh, so that uh, we have this worldwide branch temples all over the world. How many worldwide one branch temples do we have? About 300. Uh, about 300. I, and to tell you frankly, there are places that we do not have one and six. And there are places where we only have one people there. Okay. You see, we started when we started in Pokongshan, how many how many did we have? One person. Uh, very much. Uh, then after that we have more and more. Uh, she sent a lot of people to Pokongshan to study, including myself. And that's how we progress. And then today we have the Triple Jam Mountain. Okay? The current Pokongshan uh, is the Sangha Mountain. And then the newly built uh, Sutra Repository is the Dharma Mountain and the Buddha Museum is the Buddha Mountain. Uh, so we, we have this big place. That is why we need about two, three days uh, to at least go through everything. Venom Master said in this year's uh, letter to the Dharma Protectors and Friends, he said, 50 years ago, Venom Master guided both monastics and laity in building for Pongshan. This is where all our monastics reside, and thus can be called Sangha Gem, okay, or Sangha Mountains. 30 years later, thousands of temples and millions of devotees contributed to the construction of the Buddha Museum, the Buddha Gem. In the last decade, the monastics of Pongshan have not publicly fundraised to complete the Sutra repository the Dharma Gem. Instead, they use their allowance, offerings received from holding lectures and Dharma services, royalties issued from publications, as well as income from the water drop tea houses, and venerable masters one stroke calligraphy for its construction. Yesterday, when I went to Sinma Temple in JB, uh, my cousin, whom I haven't met for 30 years, he fetched me from the airport, so we went to Sima Temple together and with his wife and kids, little boys and little girls. Then the first place I brought him to was our library. Uh, I, I, I think most of, most of you haven't been there, but uh, I think the library was very well decorated and spacious and the kids started running around. Then I asked my sister-in-law, because she's a teacher, I said, uh, do you get such li such library in Malaysia? She said no because government doesn't plan, that doesn't give fund to them. Fund is limited. And I told her, 
in Fokong San, anything related to culture and education, we are we invest without hesitation. Uh, that is why when she saw that environment, the kids like it very much. And what I want to introduce here uh, is our the achievements by our Buddha Museum. Okay? You see we get awarded by ICOM and also ISO and also Trip Advisor and also even we get the best toilet in the ocean. <laughs> No, this, this one, this one actually uh, is because it's clean and spacious. Who actually designed the toilet? Our founder. You know what he did? Uh, I show you his picture first. Okay. Uh, in when when our Buddha Museum was still construct constructing in 1999 in 2009. At that year, I was still in Fobang University, but I came back to help during my school break. But so whenever I come back, I will go and see the construction from where I walk through here and then climb down the mountain here. Uh, at that time, this was still a, a place whereby there are a lot of trees and bushes. But very often, I see someone over here. Uh, at that time, this was still an empty space. I saw someone over here with this huge chair, someone pushing him, our father. Whenever I go there, I, I went there about once or twice every day. Uh, but he went there even at night, uh, even early in the morning, to do what? Uh, to find the center point, okay? That is one thing. Also to test out toilets, he will ask people to push him in. Now this turn around, if the wheelchair cannot turn, he will change the design. Okay, and then he also walk around, ask people to push him around, and whenever people try to lift him, he will ask, "Why do you lift me up?" Then people, the, the people around him will say, "There's the staircase in front." Then he said, "This change to a pathway." Uh, take away the stairs. Uh, that is why when you go, uh, when you walk from the main entrance to the Buddha, the Buddha there, there's a, a gradient of 10 story high. And there are no steps, you know, no staircases. Uh, so anyone can walk there. Uh, so our founder, he designed this one. And um, to let you know uh, the history of our achievement, it didn't come one day or just like that okay and this place is very new uh, i mean the pictures here you see is actually uh, from various activities we are going to have uh, the opening for this place in this year 16th of may which is also the 50th anniversary for Shan. and on the 16th of may in this place, we are going to have all the uh, publications by our master and also in Fokongshan and also all the canons to be moved into this place. And a university, I can't remember which university, they are going to award our our master uh, uh, honorary PhD. Uh, he's going to get another one. Then uh, the objectives of Fokongshan like I mentioned before, we emphasize on culture, education, charity, and also through cultivation. Okay, that is the uh, expansion and introduction of our three mountains. Then, what is a monastery? Again, I come back to the question. Oh, you come to a monastery, do you know what is a monastery? Master says in his diary, uh, that the uh, monastery is the root of our wisdom life. You come here to find peace of mind, you come here to get happiness, but how do you get them? Uh, but what is this place? You come to this place. You see we have aircon, we have lights, uh, we have microphone, we have food. They do not come just by itself, you know. 
but with many people's contribution. But why people contribute to this place? Because it has morning and evening chanting. It has its daily routine. It holds various kinds of dharma functions. The bell and drum dharma instruments uninterrupted. <coughs> but of course, in this place, you won't hear the bell and the drum every day. Otherwise, our neighbor will come to us. <laughs> but in Pokhapsan, you do hear our every day. That has the heart to receive mountain being, mountain being. You see, anyone can walk in. Uh, I walk in without paying anything. How many years ago into our bar level? Then you and me just walk in like that. Okay? Then it's the role model for all, never tired nor reject to transform essential beings. You come here to learn, or you are not here to, to do bad things or to feel anything. Then, what actually is, uh, is this place? It's a lecture hall, a school, a gas station, a shopping mall, a landmark for life. Or like some people actually come in here for our tea house food, you know. So it's also a canteen, it's also a food court, it's also a restaurant. Uh, and then somebody, someone actually come here to do what? To sing, you know. This afternoon there, were, uh, there was a group of youth rehearsing for what? For the week Sunday. So it can be a, a, a what, singing competition or something like that. Uh, humanist Buddhism, what does it do? Okay, Humanistic Buddhism must embody the characteristic of altruism and universality. It is based on the body mind and the bodhisattva path, namely reaching upwards for the body mind is to practice the Buddha's teaching and to illuminate his acts of sacrifice and giving. So, like you see, some of you, or including myself, we have been in, in this place for maybe one year, two years, three years, four years. While we learn to practice the Buddha's teachings and to emulate his acts of sacrifice and giving, how much have we uh, get rid of our attachments? Let's say, uh, if you look at this book, uh, and if I want you to pay $100, how to buy a lot of these books and give to people. How much is worth 100 for you? How much are you willing to give? Of course, I'm not trying to ask you to buy one house, to spend $100 and, and to buy these books and give to people. But uh, the reason behind is that Vera Master Xing Yun, uh, he wrote this in Chinese. Uh, but a group of people, uh, led by Vermeer Miao Kuang. Uh, he translated this book in English. And you know this book is not for for for, for so. It's, it is being given, given to many people. And some people actually donated how much? Maybe ten thousand and three dollars, Taiwan Taiwan dollars. Uh, so that is why I think um, this first paragraph actually explained uh, the the meaning behind giving. Okay. Next paragraph. Would humanistic Buddhism directly inherits all of the Buddha's teachings? The chapters that follow shall provide introductions to the Buddha's original teachings, his humanistic lifestyle, the spread and development of Buddhism, and how modern Buddhism holds through the Buddha's original intent. It is our wish to offer a Dharma guide for daily living so that people will be able to journey through the stages of life, birth, schooling, adulthood, matrimony, career advancements, old age, sickness, and even death, all under the auspicious of the Buddha system. Okay. I think if you get a chance, uh, try to come for every talk. I'm not trying to advertise for the talks as follow, uh, but if you follow the talks, uh, every time you come and go back, read through again, I think you will have a better understanding of what uh, our master is doing or trying to do. Now I'm going to, to go through uh, the activities uh, 
in Pokongshan started in this year March, or uh, from this year March until last year's May, uh, which is our next month's activities. This is what happened actually almost every day, uh, every year in Pokongshan. If you look at these pictures, uh, this happened in uh, Taiwan, in Taipei, in Taichung, and also in Kaohsiung, southern part of uh, Taiwan. And this is the event called Chan and Pure Land Prayer Services. It is being organized by our PLIA, but I think if you get a chance to participate in this event, it will be held in this year, October, in JB, or our PLIA meeting. Okay. 1st of February of Lunar Calendar is our devotee gathering. What's so special about this date? This date is actually the, the first day after our, our January of the lunar calendar. And this date is also the day that our master got renounced as a monastic uh, when he was 12 years old. And you know, we, we, we want to celebrate, but our founder said, uh, I'm just an old person. Uh, please ask everyone to come back now uh, and we happily have a gathering. So what we did this year, of course we have talk, uh, but in this picture you cannot see our father why, uh, because he had operation last year and he was, he's still improving, uh, still recovering. And then, you know, we have this carnival at Fokong Boulevard. This is the path, the big road between Sangha Mountain and Dharma Mountain. We had about 80 stores, 80 stores. Who came here to sell the stores? Our branch temples in Taiwan. So every store actually prepared about uh, 1,000 sets of maybe bihun, maybe drinks for the many people that you can see uh, to come here to participate in the devotee day. And what we did also, the devotee gathering recognition, uh, we have devotees who are volunteers, just like some of you. Uh, we recognize them, uh, give them uh, certificates. Then in February, what happened? New Year. How many days do we celebrate New Year in Singapore? Two days. Two days, huh? We celebrate how many days, you know, one month? One month, eh? <laughs> 真的是一个月, or one month. It's not easy. You see how many people here? Uh, the picture that you see is the 3D lights plus the, plus the fireworks. Uh, it actually... This show was actually shown to the public for this year, I think, until for 16 days, from the first day of Chinese New Year until the 16 days. Because the 16 days was a Sunday. It uh, was a Sunday, so usually we have 15 days, but it's a Sunday, so we have it for 16 days. And uh, the effect, how oh, the effect I think I can show you uh, through the video here. Uh, anyone has seen this before? No house. But I think I've seen this since it started five years ago and almost every day and until today I do not get bored, okay? And why? Maybe you can see this one.
so long, about 10 minutes. So I'll just show you a little bit of it. Uh, I think most of you have seen fireworks in our our national <coughs> uh, But I think I would like to invite all of you uh, next year, Chinese year, if you get the chance to go back and watch. It's different. Now, I like our national, fire, national day fireworks, but uh, frankly speaking, I prefer this one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Because it's too good. <laughs> okay? And why? Because it's good. Because uh, it's not just beautiful. Uh, our Golden Horse Award Best Director winner, Zhang Yi. Uh, he actually went to watch this one. And then he shared his feeling. He said, One can see fireworks anywhere, but seeing the fireworks in Pogongshan, one can feel the compassion of their own master. One can see that all is done as a method to transform all sentient beings. You see, we come in to Fokongshan or this temple with different reasons. Some people might come in because of high work. Like I said, I went into a temple because we were looking for vegetarian food. So actually, without this thing, uh, uh, I think we are trying to attract more people, people to come to get in touch with Buddhism. So actually, I come back to the question again, what is traditional? But of course, some people, they might not uh, think that a temple should be like that. But I think I would like to ask myself or pose back the question to maybe someone who asked me this question. Then what do you think a temple should be like? If a temple should be quiet uh, and meditation all the time, or a temple should be built high up in the mountain, and not accessible to people, then who would come in? Who would come into this place? Okay, I think this is a very good uh, example uh, to explain uh, this question. Our Chinese New Year activities. Okay, what you what you see here is only about one, two, three, four, five activities. I think we have more than twenty activities. In, in Fokongshan during the Chinese New Year event. See, we have our our lights, then we have the lantern festivities, loud blessings, the carnival of three acts of goodness, happily playing the Chinese riddles together. This 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 was only on the 15 days of uh, Chinese New Year. So if you look at our Singapore education, I think this can explain our Chinese culture uh, very much to our activities. And just look at our lantern festivities. Uh, when do we play with the lantern? Which day in Singapore? 15th 15, 15 day of lunar August. But actually, you know, only when I went to Taiwan and we had this one, then I found out that the Chinese culture, we we actually carry lanterns during Chinese New Year. Uh, for, but we have this for 15 days because uh, the first 15 days there are actually a lot of people. So we let everyone has a chance to be involved in this event. Next. Uh, look at this one. I think you all know Pokemon, right? Uh, People go around catching them, uh, but this was uh, designed by by my boss, uh, Hui Chuan Fast, Severo Hui Chuan. Because I think in our office, most of us are in our thirties and twenties, and but I don't I don't play Pokemon, but some of them actually went to uh, experience it and came back telling our our boss uh, that these things are happening. So we actually work with the company for free, you know. This company can give us free to design this one. To the main idea was to, to tour tour guide people when they came to Fort Wangshan. They also have to go through games. Games, playing games by the games through questions. Like uh, when you reach the non led Maybe when you reach this one, they will have uh, ABC for you to choose. 
A, what is this place? Name A, maybe uh, heaven, or maybe B, dining hall, C, I will be inspired. Then if you answer it correctly, you can move on. And also we, we catch things, but we don't catch Pokemon, we catch lotuses. Okay? So I think this is a very uh, good way uh, to attract people coming and they can go through our go through their apps and play games in Pokemon Shan. This one, who are they? Students from our Huang Mingyi University, Philippines. For your information, we have five universities in the world, yes. How many universities in Singapore do we have? When I left, there were only two, uh, but now I think three or four. Okay, then you see we have five. Uh, two in Taiwan, one in LA, one in Sydney, and one in Philippines. This group of students, they actually started coming to Ho Kwang Shan about two years ago to do what? First, to let them have the chance to learn Chinese, to practice just Chinese. Second, because we need people, really busy, not enough people. So, uh, what they do is their exchange program. They, they are being sent from Philippines to Ho Kwang Shan. So they got a chance to, to, to serve people. Then what do they do? They perform, they clean, and also they serve. They also do lunchbox packing. You know what they did while doing those things? They sing, you know. Oh, remember the Siddhartha musical? Some of them are from that group. So their voice actually very nice, beautiful. So a lot of tourists actually, when they walk past, they actually pause to listen to their singing or take pictures with them. Can you imagine when they mock, they sing? Oh. No joke, you know, they actually do their cleaning in the public and singing. A group of them singing. So I think they actually work well this. I mean, the way they, 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 they perform is to spread happiness to others. Okay? Then there's this group. Where's this place? The recycling place in Fokongshan. I think most of you won't go to this place when you go to Fokongshan. Anyone have been to this place? Surely no. no. Because uh, this place wasn't that big. I think it's about also the twi twice the size of this room only. Then in Chinese New Year, I think they, they can get rubbish like this kind of bags maybe near to 500 bags but they uh, but they because they are rubbish thrown by people and they need to separate or recycle then what do we do during Chinese New Year? I have to drive him or walk with him all over for Wang Shan, all over the tree mountain to do what? to thank them uh, and what they said this year they said we still want to come back and serve next year. Oh. Have you wondered why they still want to come back next year? I think they are happy. Oh, so happy. Oh. And if, I think a lot of people don't understand why or how they get happiness from this place. Oh. And I invite you to join us one day. <laughs> <laughs> and we celebrate uh, Dhammarana festival or the Buddha the, the Buddha's enlightenment day. We serve more than two million congi worldwide. Okay, that's the amount we, we, we calculated, including Singapore. Okay. Then what happened in this picture? Uh, this happened before Chinese New Year. Uh, we also do spring cleaning. Uh, we also do uh, preparatory work. The one you saw from our the, the, the most left picture, we actually brought down all the Buddha statues to clean and put it back. And this happened, you see we, we, we washed the road and then this was the picture when uh, all of us in Fokong Shan 
we woke up 5.30 in the morning, had breakfast at 6, and then we set off to do our, our yearly cleaning. But this year, we only had one day to do this. Why? Because in previous years, we usually we have three, four, or maybe one week. But this year, a lot of departments, they know, they are, they are, they know what to do, and they actually got things done and prepared. And Ben Lopei Chuan, him, okay, he said, during, before we all set off to do our work, he said everyone's efficiency and discipline have improved yeah. remarkably. Enabling the preparatory work of New Year to complete unclustered. The discipline that a department attaches great importance to when working is equal to truthfully upholding the Buddhist precepts. Its efficiency and execution certainly get recognized. Also to urge everyone to treasure every opportunity to participate in the cleaning. So following the precepts, uh, it's not like I wake up, I need to meditate for three hours, then I chant for five hours, then I do this and don't do, do that. But in Fokong Shan, knowing what to do and get things completely completed is also upholding the Buddhist precepts. Okay? And what is this? This is our Buddha's close relic. And it was brought down from, from this place. It was actually it's being up, uh, placed at this place and during our last year's event, uh, in, sorry, not this one, in December, uh, we brought it down to the, to the ground level so that people can get nearer to the Buddha's Relief. Then the picture you saw from here, I think most of you haven't seen it before. It's a little tooth. But this is the first time I got so close to it. Okay. Then uh, this is the ceremony uh, before it is being opened to the visitors to come and pay respect. Okay. Then what's this? You saw the, you, can you see the date? Christmas Day. Oh. And our Buddha Museum actually was established on a Christmas Day, 2011, 25th of December. Okay, and uh, I think if I explain this one, you cannot feel it. Okay, you won't be able to feel it. This, oh, this year, December. Go and watch it. I think you can you can you can guess by seeing the number of people here. You won't get to see. I mean, there are thousands in Singapore, in Malaysia, but you won't be you won't be able to see so many Taoism temples gathered together uh, to perform, to dance, to sing. I think this is a, a way of culture, and I think in Buddhism, when we say about. Uh, Planting seeds. Planting seeds mean, meaning letting them have the opportunity to get to know Buddhism. I think Grandmaster Shingyun has done a great part, and Pokong Shan has done a lot of, of propagating the Dharma. And in December, usually we have the Chonghua General Conference, I mean the youth in Taiwan. Okay. And then we also have the water and land services. I think uh, this is very special to me, you know, because I went to Pokong Shan in 2005. At that time, I wasn't a monastic yet, and all the students in Buddhist college, we have to go in and help, uh, either decorate or either to, to, to carry things all around or whatever. And at that time, you know, I saw many people actually smiling and so happy. Again, I was wondering, why are these people so happy uh, all the time? And when I look around, because I was involved in, in some of the jobs, and I saw that there were not enough people, uh, especially monastics. Then, I remember in 2000, 
five, when our most uh, paranormal sibling, our our ex abbot, but he's also the current abbot of our Thai Hua Temple in Thailand. And at that time, we still have our Big Star Day celebration in Suntec City. Okay, and he spoke to us. He said, uh, you all are only part-time volunteer. I am the full-time volunteer. <laughs> I said I contributed most of my time in the temple, and he said I'm part. I, I'm the only part-time. Then I suddenly realized when I was in this place, uh, the monastics are full-time doing all the job. Uh, I have the work and I have family. Uh, I come here because, of course, I contribute my life, my time in the temple to do volunteer. But who are the full-time volunteers? Suddenly I realized in this place. Then that's when I decided uh, to apply to get renounced to join for Hong Shan. Okay. Then last November, we had this ordination ceremony. And if you look at the number of uh, preceptors here, they are all monastics. Only, only two third, I'm sorry, only one third, they are from Hong Shan. Why there are two third of people from other temples? They want to come to our place to go through the full ordination ceremony. Uh, remember when I said, what is a monastery? It is a role model for people. Because Venerable Master Shingri, he is the role model for everyone. And Fo Kong Shan uh, is an established temple. And we are promoting the Dharma. So a lot of people, they want to come here and learn. That was why uh, there were two thirds of them who are from our other mo monastery. They came here to join our full ordination. Then, what is this event? I think some of you went, right? Okay, this is our VRIA World Headquarters 16 General Conference. Every two years, it will be held in Fo Kong Shan. I show you what happened. There. Okay. Don't laugh at this one. When you see someone family. <laughs> Because it is very dangerous for them to come out 
to our dining hall to eat. So uh, we will divide ourselves into different groups and use the van to drive to our hostel uh, to send food to them to eat. And this happened actually at 10 p.m. Then we couldn't do anything. Then early in the morning, about when we can see quite a bit of clear, clearly, then our venerable, venerable who is responsible for our gardening, uh, she called in train to help. And by before 10 o'clock, it's already up. Uh, we rescued the tree. Uh, but of course, today is that there's only a few leaves coming out. But you look at this one, uh, not only we have to do activities in Hong Shan, we have to plan for activities in Hong Shan, but we also have to look after our home. This happens every year. Uh, either a strong earthquake or a strong uh, typhoon, you have to deal with it also. Uh, I think I have a video. Just listen to the typhoon. You cannot really uh, feel how strong the wind is by just looking at this one. I took this one with my handphone uh, while, 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 while I was outside because at that time I need to go and get food for myself and for Then I tried to run over to our office but I was blown off to the side. Uh, look at my size. Uh, and I was blown off by the wind, you know. So I was stood there, standing there, then I took this one. So uh, just to let you know, we have to go through that one also. And our BRIA Cup, okay, we have basketball invitational tournament. Why? Why a, mon why a monastery wants to organize this kind of event? Like I said, uh, to let more people uh, getting in touch, getting to know about our three acts of goodness, our Buddhism. And in our seventh month of our lunar calendar, what do we have? The Sangha Day celebration. Okay, and this is actually in LA and this is in Fort Hongshan. Then we have the Youth Worldwide uh, BRA Yet Conference, a Young Adults Division. In every two years, uh, they come back to Fort Hong Shan uh, to have this annual meeting. Then every summer time, what we have? We have the live and chant activities. We have also the Youth, uh, the youth Volunteer Training Camp. We also have the Children's Summer Camp. Uh, the number of children from the picture you can see only a, a few hundreds but actually throughout the one month it, there are about nearly 1,000 kids coming back to Fort Hong Shan every day okay? and then we have the short term monastic retreat okay? we mentioned about the one stroke calligraphy by Venom Master Xing Yun why is it called one stroke? because he can't see. Uh, then when he writes, uh, he has to finish in one stroke. Uh, let's say if he stops after one character and you ask him to continue, he will not know where to continue anymore. So that is why it's called the one stroke calligraphy. And I think uh, the, the four points is actually summarized by Venerable Wei Chuan. And he said, our master, he vowed to, send, to save sentient beings and be compassionate, develop, develop broad and good affinity with others. He is selflessness and he ceaselessly focused and diligent. I think uh, I can share with you one day when, I think many years ago, when I got the opportunity to go to his office, our master's office, I think the table was this long. Okay, then he suddenly asked, asked me to look at the floor. There were 200 over pieces of, 
of his calligraphy. Then he said, I finish it in how many? One hour. I think more than 200 pieces in one hour. I, I think for his age, he showed me a good example of focus and mindfulness. Okay. This event, you look at this one, International Fruit Festival. What is fruit related to Buddhism? We offer food during Dharma functions only, right? Uh, we can offer. Then why do we have to sell food in Fokongshan? Because the farmers in around Fokongshan, they depend on the harvest of their, their farm. But it was so bad a few times that they couldn't sell their lychee because the fruits are not enough, harvest wasn't good. And they have to learn. They have to learn, learn, learn to send their kids to school or their grandkids to school. So, Venom yeah. Master actually told us to set up uh, this pro this activity to help to sell not only lychee but other other fruits in our area. Then, how much do we help? I think I wrote a thesis. I wrote a thesis on this one, but a scholar asked me how. How much money actually you, you, you help them from this event? I told him, I said, uh, we didn't calculate. Uh, but I can tell you that after three years of this event, the farmers didn't, didn't have to borrow money from bank to send their kids to school anymore. Uh, I think this is what we had done. And we actually helped to build the public library uh, around Kaohsiung area. Why? Because in 19, in 2009, there was this big typhoon also. Happened on the 8th of August. We call it Papa Sui Zai. A big flood, including Fong San, uh, flooded. And what happened? A lot of uh, tribes deep in the mountain. They are being rescued and sent to Fong San to stay. To stay for, I think, one month and a lot of their places are broken and then uh, we help them by building I think nine libraries nine libraries and just don't look not only libraries you know you know the kids at that time in 2009 about eight years ago they were still uh, some of them were still little boys and, and girls and some of them were in their you know, primary school you know what happened to them they actually came back to study in our high school. We have a Pullman High School in uh, just next to Fokong Shan, five minutes drive. And when we asked them, why do you want to come to Fokong Shan to, to our school to study? He said, they, I mean, they, 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 they told us uh, we like Fokong Shan because Fokong Shan helped, them, helped us before. They, they are Catholic, you know, they are Christians, Catholic. i show you something.
Okay, next. After all the events, um, I think I would like to explain to everybody why we propagate humanistic Buddhism. Okay, can we read this together? The Buddha established precepts to ensure that the Sangha prevails. His spirit being not trespassing upon others, it is the root of social harmony and humanity. In addition, all of these concepts are derived from the Buddha's teaching of dependence and origination, guiding us to hope and perfection. The essence of humanistic Buddhism is negating superstition and blind faith. In its inspiration of wisdom and clarity, it emphasizes self-awareness, self-enlightenment, and self-improvement by offering insights into the truth, peace, and stability, freedom from the fear and sorrow caused by birth and death, and ultimately the perfection of life. Uh, you can see this page two. Uh, it's actually page two in the book. So if you want to drop down, you can refer back to the book. So I think our master explains why he wants to propagate humanistic Buddhism. Then in the book, there are two sections that I actually wanted to, uh, to let everyone to share with everyone. You see, four principles to practice. Glory goes to the Buddha, success goes to the multitude, benefit goes to the society, merits goes to the devotees. You see, throughout all the events, we never say that, um, Master never say that it's his, it is glory, you know. It goes to everyone, or everyone. It's an effort by everyone. Then what's next? The four principal creeds for humanistic Buddhism. To honor one's family and country, to lead a moderate life, to value worldly interconnectedness, to maintain a peaceful and joyful mind. So I think through all the, all the activities that we have done or participated in, the final point, I think this is very important, to maintain a peaceful and joyful mind. Uh, through the events, you get tired, you deal with human beings, you deal with people, uh, you deal with your body conditions. I think it's important to maintain a peaceful mind and joyful mind uh, to get your inner happiness. Okay. Uh, what actually explained just now was what we had done over the past one year. Then Baron Master actually told us what is going to happen in the future. For Wong Shan must attach great importance to the development in education, cultures, arts, sports, music, academy, and information to expand the participation of Buddhism. For the events that we went through just now, I didn't actually emphasize on a lot on Dharma functions, or whereby there are chanting or prayers or whatever, whatever. Why? Because the, food, the first two uh, main points of our Fokong San is culture and education. You see, even in the future, for, for, the, for the future guidance, Master never mentioned anything about uh, Dharma functions, but on cultures, education, arts and sport and so on and so forth. Why this is so important? Uh, you see, besides Buddhism talks about cultivation, it's not about chanting or just sit into meditation. Sports and ball games are also the cultivation. Just like when, just now we mentioned about peaceful mind. You see, you have to practice your peaceful mind or during daily life, not just sitting there. Can you imagine if uh, someone sent if someone sent me to a deep mountain to meditate for 49 days, no one disturbed me. Then I got so peaceful and quiet because I have no access to internet, I have no access to TV, or I have no access to human being, only myself. Uh, then after 40 days, I come down and someone just came to me and gave me a slap. Uh, what would I do? Or what will you do if you were me? Uh, you get angry, then you fail your 49 days of meditation. Uh, then if you are compassionate and forgive the person, 
and, and just smile and walk off, then I think you are actually a bit of successful during the 49 days of meditation. Uh, so I think this one actually explains a lot. Especially in the basketball court, you see what Master explained. One raises hand to admit mistakes when one fouls, it is confession. Not making little tricks to hurt others, it is confession. It is, sorry, confession. Not making little tricks to hurt others, it is confession. Knowing whatever arises is arising independence on conditions and not playing a lone hand, this is unity. Creating opportunities for teammates, this is altruistic. Enthusiastically and bravely racing against time, this is diligence. Therefore, it is full of Buddhist doctrine, teachings in the field of court. It is full of education significance. Okay. Our sports, huh? our sports in Pullman High School. This is our gymnastic team. It was actually established in 1994. Why? Because uh, the group of high school kids, they train so hard, uh, but after that, then we, then when they wanted to promote to high school, there, there wasn't any school that wanted to accept them or set up a gymnastic team. Then, when the master Shimin got to know about it, and he set up this team in our Pullman High School. Okay? And then our Fokwang basketball team. We have uh, the girls' basketball team, and also senior girls, and also our women's basketball team in our Fokwang University. The picture that you see on the slide, this one, is actually the high school basketball league. Our school got champion in Taiwan, the whole of Taiwan High School. So when they came back to the school, we had a big celebration. All the students from uh, queue up from the gate of our school until the school compound to welcome to welcome the, the, the team to come back. Then we have the Nanhua uh, and Women High School baseball team. We got set up in 2013 and also in 2016 for our university baseball team. And also we have our Danhua University football team. The, team the, the group actually came from where? From Brazil. Brazil. Uh, they were the low income people. Uh, and we set up in 2015, they went world tour, and in 2016 they studied. Uh, at the Nanhua University. Okay. Then this group of special, uh, very special, the girls from South Africa. They are our Fokongshan Nanhua Temple Arts Performing Group. And I think I want to let you listen to their voice. This was taken when Reverend Chuan was having class with them. Then 
It's either they go to university or they go back to their tribe, do what? Become mother, get married, have children. That's all I know for their life. Then, Baron Master Xing Yun, how he got to know about this, this, this situation. Of course, this happened. This doesn't happen in one day. At first, we recruited how many? About 60 of them came for interview. Then I think we got shortlisted for about 40 people. Then they have to train in our temple in South Africa, Nanhua Temple, for I think one year. Then they came back two years ago, first batch. Oh, when I first saw them, there were 20 people. So from 60 to 20. And last year they came back, only 10 left. So where, where, where actually the rest disappear to? Some of them, of course, they couldn't get used to the life. They go back, actually. But you see, the, those people who, who stay behind, uh, they actually went to where? They went to China. Uh, they came to Taiwan. They actually performed in Malaysia as well. They didn't come to Singapore. So they actually opened up their, their, their vision in life. And this year, they have a new recruitment. Uh, when I go back to Taiwan, uh, I have to to, to handle this, this group of girls to come back. They are coming back on the 3rd of May to Taiwan for two months. And this year they are going to Philippines to perform. So you see, their, their life actually changed when they come here. But we never ask them to change their religion. Uh, they still believe their, 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 their own religion, but we change their, their life uh, through what they are doing. Then in 2007, uh, we set up the cheerleading team. Uh, for your information, most of the team members they are older than us here. Because our devotees, they are actually very talented. Uh, they sing and dance. Uh, they even brought their grandkids as young as three years old. Uh, why did we set up this one? Because in nine, you see, the first one is 2009. Uh, at that year, at that year, uh, our our basketball team, we also got the champion for HBL. But we didn't have a, a, a group of people to go and support. So at that time, uh, we asked all the devotees to gather together to go to the stadium to cheer. Of course, when you see the uniform today, uh, it's the development throughout from 2009 until today. So again, this doesn't happen in one day. Okay. Then who we'll support all the sport activities behind? We have this association we call the Three Acts of Goodness, our Physical Education Association. Our founder is our master, and our, our president is our Lai Wei Zhang, or Lai Wei Zhen. And we have designed, he designed actually, the cartoons, uh, the sports cartoons for our association, so that when we, when our team go out to competition, we have something like special gift for people. Okay. Then Master actually uh, said something to the association. He says, three acts of goodness, basketball tournament, dipping on global ambition. In order to advocate the five ways of life, virtue, wisdom, health, collective, and beauty, not neglecting the importance of sports due to intellectual emphasis, to develop the educational value of sports, therefore promoting two goodies, speak good words, think good thoughts, three acts of goodness movement, not only just targeting Taiwan, but also to move on internationally, to let the world place great value upon basketball, and every team to show mission and moral character of high quality sportsmanship. And that is why uh, from here we have the, the invitation for universities to come and play basketball together. Then our fellow master also said something about sports. He said, I think sports not only can save the country and build up our body, it can also enhance one's morality. Sports seems to be competitive. Actually, it educates one to understand respect 
unity and acknowledge one's mistake. There are many virtues in sport, therefore many young people really need sports to train oneself. This has similar significance with Buddhist practicing dhyana, recitations of the Buddha's name and sitting in meditation. Okay? Um, this is something that I want to especially explain to, to share with you. Our girls from the basketball team, you know, like this year before their finals, before their finals in Taipei, uh, the coach actually said that uh, it's not their, he, what he worries is not about their technical stuff anymore. So what he did, he actually worked with Popong Shan uh, to send them for meditation. I think five days, five days meditation. Then the MVP, the, the, the girl who won the MVP, most valued player, he actually said, after the meditation course, she became more focused. Why? Because in the team event, uh, in the competition, there's always up and down. Uh, it depends on the mood, depends on the body, uh, it depends on the, on the competition itself. Then there's another girl, she said, after the, after the meditation, I've learned to let go. Uh, we, know, we, we know this girl because she always got a problem when she, when she tried to shoot. And it, when, when the ball didn't get in, she became disturbed and got affected. Then she said, I learned how to let go. And if, when my shooting didn't get in, I just, just move on. Then there's another girl, she said, trust. Master said about unity, right? She said, I'm not alone in the team. During competition, I have my teammates. So these three things actually happen and shared by our girls after meditation. So you combine sports and our Buddhist practices actually came out from them. Anyone had watched the musical before? Yes, nice or not? Nice, huh? Okay. Why did we set up this one? Uh, they actually set up in 2007 in the Philippines, and the aim is to pro propagate the Dharma through music, to present virtue through arts, to establish mutual trust through exchange, to purify people's minds through religious beliefs. So, the Philippines, people from the Philippines, they are actually very talented. They are not only just made, you know. I'm not just made, you see. If they, they go to Pohong Shan, they clean while they sing, you know. Uh, they, they, they can even go up to the stage to perform. Okay? But we never ask them to change their religion. They are still Christian, they are still Catholic. Okay? Then I think, uh, I would like to share this song uh, that they sing in a musical as a conclusion for the talk. Okay? Uh, the normal path. You see, in life, there's suffering in the world. Uh, not just in life, all over we see. There are poor countries, rich countries. You know, rich countries, they are also suffering. They suffer what? Stress. Uh, stress. But in the poor country, you see, sometimes they can be happier than us. But they suffer what? Because lack of food, lack of water. Then there has been and there will always be. Okay? You see, if you want to change the world, it doesn't happen in one day. Uh, it's a reality that we cannot escape. In this world, they are good and bad. Okay? But all the suffering in the world, all the pain and sorrow that we see, all the hurt we try to hide inside our souls, can they be erased? Can. Uh, desire like fire can die. Through what? Uh, if you find right thought, right understanding, right speech, right action, right effort, right livelihood, right mindfulness, right concentration. This is the noble path, the eightfold things you need to do to find enlightenment in you. Oh. In the beginning, I asked all of us, why do we come into a temple? Oh. To find peace of mind, to find happiness, or to find joy. 
then through what methods? Maybe through all the activities, but during the activities, you have to be what? The very number of truths. Okay. But I think today, um, I, I got invited to come to Fort Konsan, Singapore, uh, to share with you this one. I think I would like to, to bring back the memory in 2000, I can't remember this, which year, I think 2011. Uh, I, I came back, I, when I reached this place, I saw someone, my primary school teacher. Well, I think he passed away, but I don't know where, where he's been placed. Uh, the moment he saw me, he said, uh, when are you coming back to Singapore? The people here need you. Wow, so stressed, huh? tell me this one. <laughs> the people here need me. Then, of course, uh, I spoke to him a while, then uh, he left, and I, I carried on with my stuff. But recently, when I start, I, I, I miss him again. So I asked around, and somebody actually told me he passed away. Then I think I would like to uh, share this song with you to, to give the merits to everyone and also him uh, and also uh, our master to recover soon. Uh, so if you know how to sing, we sing together. Okay? There is suffering in the world. There has been and there will always be. Thank you.